it's hard. Like you wouldn't ask Mozart to play rock music. Yeah. But in this case, I had to, <laughs> you know? Oh my God, can you imagine a Mozart rock remix? Some sort of, it should, wow, that's money, Deanna. No. We should patent that. They didn't get that. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome back to No More Ink, the ultimate deep dive into the contestants of Ink Master, who also happen to be some of the strongest artists in the game. Today I am joined by none other than the lovely Deanna. Thanks for having me, so happy to be here. Fabulous. <laughs> so Deanna, I met you for the first time in Dallas when we filmed Angels. Oh my God, I almost forgot. <laughs> That was so long ago. That was the beginning of the journey, right? Yeah, absolutely. First time competing with my tattoo work and seeing that other side. You were a baby tattooer all the way back then, right? Totally. I think I was 24 years old. I'm turning 30 this year. Dirty 30. <laughs> yeah, so I was, I was a little baby and yeah. I was just starting out. And then your journey continued from there. And so how was season 10 for you? I thought that Inked Angels would prepare me for season 10 of Ink Master, but not even nearly <laughs> half as much as I should have prepared more for it. it. It was it was hard, it was tough. I mean, mentally, physically, emotionally, I really developed an appreciation for what all these artists before me had gone through. Let's talk about like the emotional roller coaster, the, the emotional journey from, you know, when you got the call, and you were preparing, you know, to come back on Ink Master to that first day when you walked back into the Ink Master studio and you looked around and you realized all of these other artists that you're competing mm. against. Like, what were the emotions going through you? There's no one bad here. <laughs> like, everyone's really fucking good. Terrifying, because yeah. you know, like, good people are gonna keep going home immediately. And it's just like, not almost like, best artist wins, but also circumstance too. Like best circumstance, best way to play this this competition, you know, of, of people giving you the right skull or whatever. This game, especially this round, season 14, you guys are all veterans. You're all amazing tattooers, e each in your equal right. So every single artist, it, in this competition, it, it's almost like, who is strategically playing this game the best? Who is going to be the most prepared mentally, physically? It, it's it's that strength that you were talking about. It's not just, you know, who can do the biggest, baddest, best tattoo. It's so all-encompassing, and it continues from week to week to week, and it, it's... It changes the way I was brought up learning about styles and tattoos, you know? I. I was brought up being told like, don't half-ass everything and be good at everything. Try to be the best at one thing. And I spent my tattoo career honing in on that. And then to all of a sudden try to do everything else and like the, the best, the ink master is best at everything. That's opposite of what I'd always been told to, you know, cause I always, I wanted to find my niche. Well, this is definitely something that I wanna talk about and, and delve more into actually, because previously in our tattoo industry, mm -hmm. tattooers were brought up, you know, before social media, before the internet, before all of that. And to be a tattooer, you had to be absolutely the best you could be at whatever you could be at. You know, most of the time as a tattooer, you worked in a street shop and you did whatever came through the door. And your job was to be able to figure out how to do anything, everything. Right. And that is the mindset of, you know, so many pioneers and old timers, you know, in our industry because they had to. That was their bread and butter, their livelihood based on their was based on their versatility. Absolutely. And so now, since we've been talking about the tattoo industry and all of these um these changes, this evolution and you know, the this renaissance of tattooing, because of all of this technology and communication across the world you do truly get to be exactly who you are and you don't have to be anyone else. You don't have to do things you don't want to do. You can truly be a master of your, your one skill, your, your one style craft and master it for real, you know, and focus all your time and energy on that. And that mindset that you have, how you were brought up is so much different than so many other tattooers. And that's why this competition for me is so interesting because 
so many of your other competitors, even this season, season 14, talk about how they were brought up very traditionally. And tattoo politics. Tattoo politics <laughs> yeah. and the game and all of that craziness. Yeah. This whole ride is, is wild. So this season, what was your biggest strength and what do you think your weakness was ultimately? My biggest strength was also kind of my biggest weakness. Um, because I felt like I did tattoo differently than anybody else there. I did know about fine art and I, I applied that to my tattoos and luckily we had, you know, one of the judges, Nico, he is also kind of like that as well. So I got to sort of like... Well, you um, impressed him. You I impressed really all of us. Know, but you impressed all of us. He, he yeah. has that like that that same fine art painting background that I had. So I, I felt like I had that leg up because I know a lot about that traditional style of oil painting. Yeah, that was sort of my strength, I feel. It's just that I did something different and I knew something different that not everybody else was as familiar with. On the downside, my weakness was that I did something different than what everybody else was heading, heading towards. Right. I just had my own style, which I'm I'm really proud of cultivating, you know, as well. I worked so hard to create a style, and I think, honestly, if you are in any art form, you want to have something where someone will look at your tattoo and say, that person did that. Right. That's what I worked hard on yeah. getting, so. Yeah, I'm, well, I understand that because artwork itself is it's an extension of you. The fact that you're able to recognize, you know, what this competition asks from you, but still hold that truth more valuable is amazing. It is, because you're seeing everything from a very clear perspective from many different angles and you're understanding everything and you still understand how valuable your own contribution is to the art world and to the industry. Thank you. Going into the second episode. You know, you came out really strong episode one. That lover's eye was <laughs> crazy. It was crazy. It was, I mean, to me, one hour tattoos are like, they're bangers. You know, a little yeah. one hour tattoo. That was not a banger. That was like a little cutout of something that would be at the Met or something, you know? It was just like a keyhole. To, it was incredible. Do you think that put even more pressure on you then going into Episode number two. Yes, because all the targets were on me after that too. <laughs> Everyone was like, "Oh, we gotta get this bitch out," you know. Yeah. But but it was great. Like I was, oh my goodness, to have that review from like you too. Like when I did that, I I was so happy. Um, it was amazing. Thank you. That made me so happy. I was, I, yeah, I was so proud of that moment. It it helped build confidence for the second round. Yeah. Even though it didn't go as I planned, but. I feel like your swing at that, you know, Lover's Eye was such a fine art piece that going into round number two, which was a fine art challenge, all of your competitors were like, well, we've already seen her crush this, so we're obviously not gonna give her anything she would do good at. And I believe they gave you the most opposite tattoo that you would ever, yes. ever choose for yourself. I felt like it was basically the neo trad version of the fine art piece, and that's what I got because it was just color blocking and black lines, and and that was it. You know, it was it was flat, no blends anywhere really. Um, it's the opposite of everything I've always done, and I I knew when they got the skull pick. I mean, I wasn't expecting them to give me the girl with the pearl earring or anything like that, but. I mean, that's, that's why this game is so frustrating, though, because even on the judging panel, we're like, can you imagine if Deanna got the girl with the pearl <laughs> earring? Can you imagine what would have happened? And I had, or I had tattooed that just months ago, a girl oh, with the pearl earring, yeah. and I had fun with it. But honestly, like, I know, you know, everyone shout on my tattoo I did that day, but I still love that. Yeah. I did. I thought it looked like a Picasso. I thought, you know, I still love that tattoo, and I, I know she did too, so I'm, I'm still oh, proud yeah. of that thing. And the thing is, when it comes down to these challenges, that's why when we talk about art being so subjective, what it came down to with this tattoo that you were eliminated on ultimately, the design was beautiful, color choices was beautiful, it came down to those technical fundamentals that have to make or break you in this game. It's unfortunate when the game 
takes out a strong artist right in the beginning. You know, because it, it's like we we on the judging panel felt like we were missing out on all of the beautiful artwork that you you know should have and could have you know given us you know the rest of the season. It, but and I, I know it's it's fairly controversial too. And what I also believe is, you know, when for me, I feel like you don't look at tattoos normally under a microscope either. When you judge a tattoo or see a tattoo. You see it immediately and you have that first response when you see any type of art, hear any type of music. There are so many amazing tattooers in the world where if you look under a microscope, there's imperfections everywhere. I think in this challenge for you, it wasn't just the cubism, which is so opposite of anything that you do. This is the opposite of your style, right? You also had a little bit of a jumper there. Your canvas was a little twitchy. Yes, and I didn't want to lean on that either. I really try to make not make a big stink about it, but yeah, that, that really was tough of how jumpy she was. That also taught me the lesson that I probably should stay away from calves too, because I feel like calves, ankles, that's sort of where twitchiness mm -hmm. can happen. Yeah, so. it's gonna be definitely lots of different opinions on this one. Yeah. Looking forward, you know, how do you think your life is going to change after this round of Ink Master? Because I really do believe that many people at home are gonna have the same opinion as you have. You know, tattoos are the feeling and the emotion that you get from seeing them initially, right? And so, how do you think that's going to affect, you know, um, how this is all gonna play out for you? Do you think it's going to change different things in your life? Do you think it's going to change things professionally for you? You know, I, I, I love the clientele that, that I have. I feel confident that People will see for themselves and they see that tattoo. I, I hope they'll make that decision and say, you know, it looked like a great tattoo. And so yeah. I can only hope that there's some good feedback after that and they see what I'm talking about as well. But you know, I respect how this all plays out and what you guys judge and I totally see how the competition is. Yeah. Um, but I do hope they see how I, I saw the tattoo yeah. because I thought it was funny. Yeah, oh, I'm not kidding. You got eliminated and I went backstage and cried. I told you that. I went backstage and I did. I cried because, I don't know, I just felt like it wasn't your time. It wasn't your time. <laughs> Thank you for caring so much. Because you seem like somebody that kind of follows your heart in terms of what you believe in artistically and everything, so. I do. And how I think is very controversial, you know, and it's very, it's, I know it's very different. That is true. I, I'm passionate about what I do and I create and it is different. Yeah. I mean, even that opinion I'm sure will be controversial. You know, some people have the misconception that every tattooer has to know how to do everything. And it's not always the case. In this competition, specifically Ink Master, we are trying to find that person but I don't think it takes away from your craft. And I think that in itself, the passion that you have for your art is just as inspiring. So what about round three? Would you ever come back? Really, I have so much fun on this show. As hard as it is, I would come back a third season, especially if I had more time in advance to prepare. And I would, I would just like to see like what I could do when I don't feel like shit. I could sit when I've had time to maybe practice everything and just like see if I could do it. Yeah. You know? Yeah, keep testing yourself. Yeah. yeah. I like testing myself. You know, I'm yeah. afraid of heights, but I'm, I am still want to go and keep trying rock climbing because I want to see if I can not yeah. be so afraid anymore. Yeah. Face, so. It, face it like head on, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, that's dope. Looking forward, what are you, Deanna, hoping to accomplish in the future? And what does your biggest dream truly look like? Well, my dream changes a lot. Um, at this point in my life, I want to make a positive impact on the tattoo industry. Um, I've created a shop right now that has a really good, safe environment for women. Um, and I've hired a lot of women for my shop. I want to create safe spaces in the tattoo community. Um, I want to also do more charitable work. I dip tattoo nipples for free on women who need them. Um, just try to find like that good impact so I can give back because I appreciate 
what I've been given in this life so much that I just kind of want to help others too. Yeah. Um, and I also want to help change the way people see tattoos in the industry. Like we've gone so far with seeing what tattoos were like 10 years ago to what they are now. And I want to keep pushing that to show that like the most important thing may not be like, is this whole section completely saturated or is it what this tattoo looks like to you? I also want to represent somebody who has always been constantly underestimated because I'm a girl with a high-pitched voice who wears cute clothing and all of this and I've always been underestimated and I want to also represent that you can be you can feel sexy you can you know feel cute and you can you know present yourself in a certain way and also kick everyone's ass in what you're passionate about too so. I love it I'm with you <laughs> if you're into starting a cult let me know let's do it <laughs> dude I I'm so grateful to you for your voice and your inspiration and staying strong to the things that you truly believe in. Being a representative of thinking for yourself, paying it forward, so many things, Deanna. I think you're awesome. Thank you. I think you're awesome. <laughs> I appreciate it. And I it. like your outfit. <laughs> I think your part is sort of the same. I'm the red hair version. I, I, I'm so proud of you for standing your ground. It's been so lovely. I'm Thank so you for letting me share my voice, too. Yeah. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah, listen, everyone keeps saying, you know, you're the judge, you're the judge. And yes, I am one of the judges, but you are, we're both artists, and we both have a voice and an opinion and a different perspective, and they're equally as important, and they, they should all be heard. Thank you for having that platform and sharing it with others and you've always inspired me for how open you also are on your media about your life and everything yeah, so man. thank you thank you wow this was lovely <laughs> well thank you guys for joining us today don't forget to keep checking out the ink master youtube for everything ink master